Okay, so this is limits of polynomials and rationals, with basically polynomial numerators and denominators. But this is the, the lazy method. This is not the, the full mathematical power form method. So what we're going to be using is just looking at in behavior of these polynomials and rational functions. So when you look at each of these, if you remember when we're dealing with polynomials, we don't care about any of this because the first one is Bill Gates. He's going to get really rich and none of us really make a difference to him. He's a billionaire or our little hundreds of thousands of dollars don't amount to anything compared to his billions. So all we have to do is look at the end behavior. So what is the end behavior of this guy? Well, we already know that it does this. So when you see it, when you read a limit, it's saying, what is the limit of this function? So what is what is this function basically approaching as x approaches this? So x approaching infinity is going this way. And x approaching, I like to write it this way, negative infinity is going that direction. Because we have infinity is on the right and negative infinity is on the left. So they're really just saying, what is what is this thing approaching as our x go to the left? That's all this is saying is left. And so as we go to the left, you can see with our in behavior, our function goes down. It looks like this in our graph. So as my x goes to the left, you can see my little dot is going down. That means it's going to negative infinity. And each of these were going off to some number. So if we go to the right, it would be positive infinity. So x approaches infinity, our function goes up. You see that's going up. So positive infinity down to negative infinity. So going to the left, our function goes to negative infinity. If I were to change this to a power of like 2, now we have that polynomial. Let's get rid of, let's make it a 4 so that the other guy is not affecting it. 4, see now it's up. Then going to the right, we are going off to infinity. And then also going to the left, the function goes, look how fast it goes up too. It's going off to positive infinity. So going to the left, positive infinity. Going to the right, positive infinity. So the limit of this function as x approaches infinity or negative infinity would be infinity and infinity. And again, if I put a negative in front of it, then we know it's going down right? And so that would be down to negative infinity as x approaches infinity. And as x approaches, sorry, negative infinity, it goes to negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, it goes to negative infinity. So they're both negative infinity for these. So when you're looking at these, you're just thinking about the end behavior. This would be, inf this would be negative infinity. These two would be negative infinity. This would be positive infinity. These would be positive infinity. This would be infinity. And these would be negative infinity. So if it's going down on the end behavior, then it's negative infinity. And if it's going up, it's positive infinity. That's it. It's the lazy form. So we just say infinity. With rational functions, we think of the exact same thing. But when we're dealing with rational functions, we're looking at the asymptote. And so whatever the asymptote is, the y equals, that is our limit. So when the, the top degree and bottom degree are the same, we're just looking at the coefficient. So this would just be 1. Top degree, bottom degree are the same. So this would be 5 over 1, which is 5. And so we can see that here. If I switch these over, you can see this is our rational function, right? And as we approach negative infinity, our value is going towards 1. That's our horizontal asymptote, whatever it is. If I scroll out here to positive infinity, you can see it's becoming 1. See, it's 1 1.035. It's slowly ticking down to 1. And as we go to negative infinity, same thing, just this time. We're coming up, you can see it's 0 0.925, 0 0.926, 0 0.927. It's slowly ticking towards 1. So whatever those coefficients are, whatever your horizontal asymptote is, that is your limit. So here, the same thing. The x squared and the x are the same. So this would just be 
one third. Doesn't matter if it's going to infinity or negative infinity, they all have that same style horizontal asymptote. And so our graph is just approaching that number one from the left. So as x approaches infinity, it's approaching one. As x approaches negative infinity to the left, to the right, <clears throat> our function approaches one both directions. So if the degree is the same, that's it. It's nice and quick. Now, if the bottom degree is bigger, if you remember these, we get zero. So remember, if bottom is bigger, then you had y equals zero, which means our limit would also be zero. Now, the last two are for limits as infinity or negative infinity, and that's because the top one is bigger. Okay? So if the top is bigger, then all you have to do now is think about it the way it was. This goes off to nothing, and this goes off to nothing. So this will be the limit as x cubed is divided by x squared, negative. And this is as x approaches infinity. So if we simplify this some more, you get the limit as x approaches infinity of negative x. And so now, you actually write it as negative infinity. It didn't get transferred because it's infinity. <laughs> there we go. If we plug infinity in, we would get negative infinity. So again, this is the lazy form. There's a much more mathematical way of doing this, but we haven't talked about that technique yet. So we're just getting an intro to it. So now if you were to plug this in your calculator, you can see it go off to infinity. So we get this, this graph. And so as you can see, here comes our x. So which direction is it going as x goes to infinity? It's going down. So it's going to go down to negative infinity. So our graph looks like this at the end behavior, like that and like that. So as x approaches negative infinity, we would be getting infinity. And as x approaches infinity, we would be getting negative infinity, which is what we get. So if you just cross everything off and look at just the leading terms, it will tell you what the answer is. So with this one, we now we're going to a negative infinity. So from the graph, we know it's positive infinity. And so we know looking at it, this would be negative infinity of x cubed over negative x squared, which is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative x, just like before. But now when you plug in a negative infinity, be a negative times a negative, which is infinity, just like our graph looks like. So again, you want to just look at the end behavior. And you can use the same technique as above. This one would have been limit as x approaches negative infinity. And then we look at just the leading terms. So if we crouch off the 3, because that's not big enough, we get 2x on top. And we get rid of the 5. And so we would get negative x squared. You have to use it. This would then give us the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2 over negative x. And then we know that that is equal to 0 because the bottom is bigger. But it's just a lot easier to do it. Doing the same thing here, this would be the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x squared over 3x squared. And then they cancel, giving us the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 third, which is 1 third. So yeah, you can use that same idea of just looking at the leading terms because they're going to grow so much faster than the other ones will. And then when you start plugging in infinity, which you can't, but really, really, really large numbers, they're so much larger than the other ones. They really are the Bill Gates. These are Bill Gates and this is us. So they're making like $20,000 a second and we're making $20,000 every six months. So it's not, <laughs> we are nothing compared to them. They are the gods, um, but they get big, really big. And so they're the ones that tell us how much money we actually have. Not these, how much, how much, how big the number will get. So you just have to use the asymptotes when you're looking at these. Thank you.